Greetings, folks. One of the neat things about magnetic fields is that you can use them to create very cool devices. Um, one such device is a standard DC motor. And that's what this video is about. So here's the basic schematic for a DC motor. You have a shaft with a coil wrapped around it. Attached to the coil are two half metal sheaths that are mounted on a cylinder um, that's an insulator. So these guys are insulated from one another. And the cylinder is pinned so that the whole assembly can rotate about this axis. The electrical system terminates in brushes, which are in contact with the half metal sheaths, making what are called sliding contacts. So current goes from the high voltage side of the battery, through the sliding contact, through the coil, over, through the coil, back to the sheath, back to the sliding contact, to ground, makes a complete circuit. So if we were to take a snapshot of the system at a given instant, this is what it would look like. If we put a compass here and here, we would find that the compasses would point like so which is to say that the current in the coil would produce a magnetic field down the axis of the coil that would be such that this end would act like a south pole. Notice that the north pole of the compass is being attracted to that south pole. And this end would end up acting like a north pole. During the test, you're not going to have the option of putting a compass on the page, so you're going to need some clever way to determine the direction of the magnetic field down the axis of a current carrying coil. You can do this by laying your right hand on the coil with your fingers in the direction of the current. Current is in this direction in this particular case. You notice the fingers are in that direction. Having done that, the direction that your thumb points will identify the direction of the magnetic field down the axis of the coil. So in this case, the field lines are leaving this end, which means this end would be a north pole. So the hallmark of all motors is that you have a fixed magnetic field and an alternating magnetic field. Um, here, the fixed magnetic field is being generated by a couple of fixed magnets. The alternating magnetic field is going to end up being generated by this coil. Um, this is a south pole at this point. In a while, it will end up being a north pole, and you'll see how that works here shortly. So again, back to the snapshot, with this acting like a south pole and this being a north pole, you can see you're going to have an attraction between those two. This south pole and this south pole, you're going to have a repulsion between the two. Similar phenomena down here, north and south are going to be attracted, north and north are going to be repulsed. Net effect is that you're going to have a motivation to rotate this shaft in the counterclockwise direction. In the next instant, the shaft is rotated some. The sliding contact is still in contact with this sheath, which means that the direction of the current is still in the same direction, which means this is still a south pole. You're still getting the south pole attracted to the north pole, except now they're closer, which means the attraction is even bigger. Similar kind of thing is happening down here, which means that you are continuing to have a torque rotating this body in a counterclockwise direction. Once you get into this position, you'll notice that the brushes are no longer in contact with either of the sheaths, and all of the current through the coil ceases. Um, momentum, though, carries the shaft through this position, whereupon this sliding contact touches this sheath, which changes the direction of the motion of the current in the coil, which reverses the direction of the magnetic field. This used to be a south pole, now it's a north pole, whereupon you now have a north pole juxtaposed against a north pole, giving you an enormous repulsion. Over here, an enormous repulsion. Again, a torque rotating the body in a counterclockwise direction. You continue on, repulsion, attraction, attraction, repulsion, etc etc. So the net effect is that you end up getting a shaft that ends up rotating continuously like this. Now 
As a minor but interesting note, by controlling the voltage, you can control the current in the system. With lower current through the coils, you will get a smaller magnetic field at the ends of the coil. This will produce smaller attractive and repulsive uh, forces uh, with the fixed magnets, which in turn will generate lower rotational speeds. Higher currents will generate larger magnetic fields, which will produce larger forces of attraction and repulsion, which, which will generate larger um, spin speeds. How might this be useful? Consider a variable speed drill. Drills like this either take AC out of the wall and convert it to DC, or they use DC power packs. They have variable pressure triggers, which are such that when you squeeze them just a little bit, they provide low voltage. If you squeeze them a lot, they provide high voltage. Lower voltage generates lower current, which corresponds to lower rotational speeds, higher voltage, higher currents, higher rotational speeds. That's how the DC motor varies its rotational speed. Pretty cool. In any case, in summary, uh, devices that take electrical energy and turn it into mechanical energy are called motors. That's what this device is. Interestingly, if you take this device and physically rotate it, which is to say if you put mechanical energy into it, it will generate electrical energy across the power supply. Devices that do this are called generators. Put a little differently, forcing the shaft to rotate generates an electrical voltage. This is not something that I'm expecting you to understand at this point. The phenomena responsible for this is what's called magnetic induction. It's something we'll be talking about in the next chapter. The bottom line of this final comment is that a generator and a motor are essentially the same thing. It just depends on whether you're putting electrical energy into the system or mechanical energy into the system. Anyway, that's it for the DC motor.